Fast shipments of supplies are brought up close to the lines as the hour for the new Western Front offensive nears. A railhead company sets up a Class I food supply dump with enough provisions to feed a million men for one week. Here, artillery ammo is buried in caches along roadways pointing toward the front. The hollow U trenches protect the shells from artillery fire. Advancing units can replenish their ammo stocks from these roadside ASPs without undue halt. On the Third Army front, the drive to the Tsar has given impetus with the elimination of the fortress of Metz. In this action, Mezier le Metz, north of the city, is being fired upon from emplacements at the Hermann Goering steel mill. Elements of the 90th Infantry Division are ready to enter Mezier le Metz. Final shelling of the town is directed by the 7th Field Artillery Observation Battalion. Inside the battered town, the medics evacuate engineers who were wounded while demining the area around one stubborn point of siege. Metz and its outlying forts constituted a formidable obstacle before which the Third Army had been held up since mid-September. The gradual collapse of Metz defenses terminates the French city's long reign as Western Europe's strongest fortress. Infantrymen take cover as they move through the streets, alert against snipers who may have been left behind by the retreating Nazis. A typical fort, strengthened by the Germans after its capture from the French. Active resistance in Metz ended 22nd November. First Army activity on the Hürtgen Forest Front, through which our troops have been fighting since crossing the German frontier in September. Tanks pace the advance of an infantry division. in this wooded terrain is southeast of Aachen, where a new Allied drive begins on 16th November. The British 2nd Tactical Air Force prepares barrage balloons, which will be floated along the front lines of the 1st Army sector. They'll form a bomb line to designate location of our own troops during the aerial assault preceding the move up of ground forces. Fifteen balloons will go up for this purpose, with a spare inflated on the ground in case one is shot down. Beginning at 11.15 hours on the 16th, bombers of the Allied Air Forces, escorted by fighters, dropped thousands of tons of fragmentation and incendiary bombs on fortified positions east of Aachen. attacks continue for one and a half hours. The ground forces begin their drives at 12.45 hours, aiming at Duren and Yerlich on the rear river line before Cologne. The attacks are launched jointly by the 1st and 9th U.S. Armies. North of these troops are the Tommies of the British 2nd Army. The advancing Americans encounter extensive fields of ingeniously placed mines which impede the progress of men and machines.
combat engineers clear and mark the mined areas. The forward push is a case of half a mile and half a village at a time. Flanking movements bring our troops into the backyards of small dwellings where they take advantage of whatever natural concealment is available. The 1st and 9th Army lines swing forward on a tight 25-mile front as many small towns fall in the face of the opening push. Three American armies of the 12th Army Group have now taken approximately 400,000 prisoners since D-Day. In the fighting near Breinick, Germany, medium tanks add their 75mm guns to the artillery barrage. Their long-range coordinated fire against German positions facing the 1st Army is directed like field artillery from tank command posts. Ammo is stacked up near the tanks as the crews await the order to open fire. <laughs> 